Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. It was very foggy this morning and I wish I could have done this sooner, but you know, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, and then there's all these other mysteries in the Bible, you know, but it's like, behold, I show you a mystery. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But um, I'm wearing this sweater, my old, old sweater, it's stained and everything because my King Change video ministry sweater, I was carrying one of my little hens. They're not babies anymore, so I can't call them babies, but they're young hens. And I was carrying one back to the uh, coop because sometimes the new ones, when you let them out to roam a little bit, they don't want to go back when you tell them to go back. <laughs> so I had to carry one and I didn't know that she had poop and junk all over her feet. And I was carrying it right here and I was walking to the thing. And by the time I got there, I realized I stink. My whole sweater's messed up. <laughs> so I had to clean her feet. I tried to wash the sweater by hand and it still stunk. And I only do laundry once a month. So it's in the dirty clothes. So that's why I'm wearing this, because someone asked, that's why I'm wearing this sweater. But uh, it's starting to get warmer now, so I'm gonna get to the point where you're gonna start seeing me out uh, without the sweater. Not, uh, I love that sweatshirt during the winter. I just wear sweatshirts and white undershirts. But I uh, had a big mistake with them, so I'm not wearing my King James uh, Bible uh, sweatshirt. But that being said, um, I wanted to name this, I still probably will, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But as I got through the study, God showed me a lot more than what I wanted to put out. So we're going to be going over a lot in this study. Okay? In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, question mark. Because sometimes the whole point of this study that I was trying to do is sometimes we get confused of what that actually means. Some of the brethren are getting confused. Um, you have 1 Corinthians. You don't have to turn there yet, but first, because we're going to go to it in more detail. But 1 Corinthians 15.52 says, in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump. Then you have 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up. And they take two of those and they slam them together and say they're the, they're, they're the same event and they're the exact same thing. Now here's the thing. As we're going to get through this study, we're going to realize the main point that I wanted to make out in this study was that it's two parts to one event. I do agree. It's one event. But there's two parts to it. And people are taking away the two parts and making it one part. And it's not. There's two parts to that event. We're going to get into it. But before we can get into it, God was like showing me that you need to go back and look at all the times people have been caught up in the Bible. And I was shocked. I came across seven times, you know, the Bible word for Bible number for completion. I came up with seven caught up in the Bible. Okay. Uh, first, before we go away, what I always explain caught up. Why do I hate the word revel uh, uh, rapture? Sorry, I love the word revelation. Rapture starts with an R. Why do I hate the word rapture when they try to apply it to the Bible? Well, when we get done with the study, I hope you guys can understand there's a difference between rapture and caught up. I've already done tons of studies on it, and brethren are still using the word rapture like it's no big deal. It is a big deal to me because words have meaning. Okay, Rapture means to be taken with violence by force of a pleasing nature. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You have to go off that because we can't get a Bible definition of rapture because rapture, the word rapture is not in the scriptures. But caught up is. And we're going to notice it's going to say caught up a lot as we go through this study. And there's a reason for that. You're going to go into something that God doesn't want you to go into and he catches you up. Okay, that's the whole point. It's You want to go. If God says, hey, come up hither, we want to go. We're not going to fight God, okay? We're vexed by this world. We're vexed by this flesh, this rotten flesh that keeps pulling us down and getting us to disappoint our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to go home when it's time to go home. We're not going to be fighting Him. And it's not going to be done with violence of a pleasing nature, okay? There is no rapture. But to explain, that's what caught up is. You're going to go into something that God doesn't want you to go into or, or see something that God doesn't want you to see or go somewhere that God doesn't want you to go and God goes, I want you to come up. And He catches us from falling into something He doesn't want us to fall into. And that's what we're going to be talking here. So first we're going to go to Genesis 4.17. The first man that's ever caught up in the Bible. And if you can remember, <laughs> it's Enoch. So Genesis 4.14. What's he being catched up from? Well, before the flood. Okay, Enoch is a, is a type of Gentile that's being caught up before the flood. Okay, 
But Genesis 4, 17, we read, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So Enoch was the son of Cain. Mm -hmm. Genesis 5, flip over to Genesis 5, 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years. Enoch lived 60 and 5 years. And begat Methuselah, the oldest man in the Bible. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. 365 years. People were living to be 900. Okay. Of over 900. But he lived to be 365 years. In verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now for this first catching away, the question I'd ask is, who wrote Genesis? Uh, that would be Moses. Moses wrote Genesis. What does the Bible say? Before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And if you go through Jesus... His earthly ministry, when he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, he was there in the Old Testament, but he was there in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay, he talks about it. My father, the soul, is a witness. The body is a witness. So you have God the Father as a witness, and the Son of God the Father, capital S, Son of God the Father is the witness. Also, it talks about how the Spirit of God can be a witness. There's your three witnesses before two or three witnesses. God was showing Moses, the Godhead was showing Moses, what happened in Genesis. That's how we get this. Was there any witnesses to Enoch where he was not, for God took him? It doesn't say. It just says he was not, for God took him. So we know it's a catch, catching up. He didn't die. God took him. Caught up. Okay. Was clothes left behind? We don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, was blood left behind? Don't know. Once again, it doesn't say. So when people try to read into it, be careful when brethren try to read into it. This was the first time, and Moses is writing it down saying he was caught up. Now as we look at some of the other catchings away, we can look back at this one and say, if there was someone there, would they have saw something? Maybe nobody was there to see something. Was there something to see? Okay. But those are the questions you ask, okay? It doesn't say. It doesn't say if the clothes were left behind. It just says he was not, for God took him. If he was not, that means there's nothing left behind to say, well, he was here. So I would say, well, there was no clothes and there was no blood. But as we keep going, we realize that in all the other accounts, no blood's left behind except for one, and no, uh, and no clothes are left behind except for one. Actually, two. There'll be two of them, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But there's only one where the body and the blood is left behind. One kind of caught up. And we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. But there's not that much for us to go on. The second catching away. Turn to 2 Kings 2.9. The main part of this is looking at the visual. Because that's the whole point I wanted to talk about this. Because I'm seeing what's going on in the world with the UFOs being released. All the information our government has. The U.S. The United States government has on the UFOs and uh, how the movies are trying to push people to, you know, alien abductions and how they see people floating up. But we always keep preaching that it's going to happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, everybody's just going to go, poof, they're gone. Is that really what's going to happen? That's why we're trying to go through all the times that somebody's caught up. So, second catching away, you have um, Elisha, Elijah, Sorry, I gotta say it right. Elijah gets caught up before going into Babylon. I mean, before the Jewish people get conquered and go into Babylon. Okay, but God wanted him to come up at that time before all the bad stuff started happening. 2 Kings 2 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what shall I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. In other words, 
we're gonna have a witness this time. Okay. Someone's, someone's there to see something. Or is it only because somebody's worthy of seeing it? Okay. Verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and, a, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it. Elisha, I'm sorry. Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariots, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his old clothes and rent them in pieces. Okay. Was there an eyewitness this time? Yes, there was. What did he see? Did he see Elijah just poof, disappear? No. Okay. It was an event. It took time. Okay. He saw, behold, there appeared chariots of fire coming down and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. It takes time to go up a whirlwind into heaven. Okay. It took time and he saw something. It wasn't in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. Now, was clothes left behind? Well, the mantle of Elijah fell off. But I'm talking about clothes as a whole. Was all his clothes left behind? No, just his mantle. That's what Elijah picked up. Okay, was blood left behind? No. That's why when it says in, uh, back there in Genesis, when it says Enoch was not, for God took him, where's Enoch? He's just not here. There was nothing left behind as far as his clothes that he was present tense wearing or the blood. But there's all these teachings out there that clothes will get left behind, or blood will get left behind. I don't see that in the Old Testament, in these two instances. It's not there. But Elijah is a type of uh, Jew, because there's a catching away in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. But we see there a second catching away. And once again, was there an eyewitness this time? Yes, there was. Did he see something? Did he see Elijah going up? He did. Okay. And once again, clothes. The mantle fell off of him. It says the mantle fell off. But the rest of his clothes went up with him. His blood went up with him. Okay. The third catching way. And also for um, Elijah, Elijah, uh, he's going to die in the time of Jacob's trouble where he will be beheaded. Okay. He will die in the time of Jacob's trouble. But he went up without dying so far. You get to the third catching away that the Bible talks about. Before the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Turn to Acts 1, chapter 1, verse 1. This is Jesus' ascension. Okay? He's being caught up. This is the third caught up. It's amazing that it's the number three. How many days was he in the grave? Three days. This is the third time someone's being caught up. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He says, I am the truth. I am the resurrection. He's talking to the Jewish people. See, Jesus was there for these first two that we talked about. I believe with all my heart because Jesus is the resurrection. He is the truth and the life. Okay? That includes, he's, 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 he was there in the Old Testament. He was part of Enoch going up. He was part of... Uh, Elijah going up. Now, I don't believe the Old Testament saints were looking forward to the cross, but the point I'm making is, is you have to go through Jesus Christ to get to the Father. Regardless, Old Testament, New Testament, regardless, you have to go through Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. He is the life. But three days he's in the grave. This is the third resurrection. Acts 1.1 The former trees have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, I'm saying to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days. So after his resurrection he was still on this earth for forty days. And speaking of these things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, which, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with 
water. Someone asked me, where does it say that the water baptism doesn't, isn't important anymore? Look right here what Jesus himself says. For John truly baptized with water, but, that negates the whole first part of the sentence, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Two different baptisms. And which baptism matters? The Holy Ghost. That's the baptism that matters. Water is just an outward showing for the Jewish people. Verse 6, When they therefore was come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. Did I flip my notes? But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He's being caught up before the Holy Ghost comes down and starts. people start getting the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both to Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. How many people witnessed Jesus Christ's resurrection? At least 40. Talks about showing himself to 40 people. Or, I mean, he was there for 40 days. There was lots of people there. There was witnesses to his resurrection. And they were told to be witnesses. And to the uttermost part of the earth, verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Wait a minute. While they beheld, they saw it. So that already answered one of our questions. Was there a witness? They saw it. It didn't happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. They saw it. it said, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Cloud came down, grabbed him, received him out of their sight. Or it could have formed underneath him. I don't know. I wasn't there for that part. But the point is, is there's a cloud involved that catches Jesus up. He's caught up. Victoria. No. She's going to keep doing it. Victoria! Get over there. <laughs> Sorry about that, brothers and sisters of Christ. Back to the study. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven as he went up, they looked at heaven as because he's going up, and they're looking up. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Okay, cloud comes down, catches him up. Remember the glory of the Lord. It presents itself three different ways, manifests itself three different ways physically. Light, fire, cloud, and smoke. I always put that as the third one because sometimes they, they could call it a cloud, sometimes they can call it smoke. Okay, it's been called both. But those are the three ways that the glory of the Lord is manifest. So the glory of the Lord came down and called him up and got him up. Okay. John 14, 2, remember, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If, the, if it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's caught up before the church age truly gets moving. I believe in Hebrews where it says the death of the testator brings in the New Testament. But the church age really gets going when they get the Holy Spirit. Jesus ascends up so the Holy Spirit can come down on the body of Christ. Okay. That's the whole point. Was there an eyewitness to this? We just read it. People were watching, and even after it was done, they're still standing there looking up. It had to be two angels tell them, hey, you know, two men stood by them in white apparel. Angels, brethren, <laughs> you know, Old Testament saints. That's why when we get to the main part, why I believe what I believe lately about what's going to happen for us. Okay. But you see two men standing in white apparel, that's important. Okay. So was there an eyewitness? Yes. Was clothes left behind? No. Was blood left behind? He left all the blood on the cross. He's the glorified Jesus Christ. He's now back into his incorruptible body that he was in before he came in the likeness of sinful flesh in the Old Testament. He already poured out all his blood. No more blood to pour out. 
So there was no blood left behind. Right? It's important. But that was the third catching away that we read in the Bible. So what's the fourth one? This one kind of caught me by surprise a little bit. Okay, What's this fourth catching away? The fourth catching away happens at death. In the, in, the, in the church, what we call the church age, from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, there's a catching away in between. There's catching away, once we finish reading this, that's happening all over us, all around us. When a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, brother and sister in Christ, dies, there's a catching away. What is that? It's the soul going up. The body is left, we're already asking the question, we'll get into this. Body is left behind, soul, uh, uh, blood is left behind, clothes is left behind, but the soul goes up. Why? Because in the Old Testament, where did the soul go? It went down. Abraham's bosom or hell? Those were your two destinations before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So now what happens after Jesus' resurrection Nobody goes down that's, that's saved, okay, that God has saved. Their blood, they're covered with his blood. They don't go down anymore. So when you die, your soul, oh, and God goes, nope, you're not going down, you're coming up. And he catches the soul and he brings it up. Turn to 2 Corinthians 12, 1. You say, oh, you're kind of making this up. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 12, 1. It is not expedient for me to doubtless to glory... I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one, such an one, caught up to the third heaven. I believe Paul's talking about himself. Caught up to heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter of utter of such a one will I glory yet of myself will I not glory but mine own infirmities and you don't have to turn here but 2 Corinthians 11:25 says thrice was I beaten with rods once was I stoned he was stoned to death thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day I have been in the deep I like reading the whole scripture he was stoned to death once. This is Paul, God showing him what it's like to when a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman dies before the catching away of the body of Christ, before the time of Jacob's trouble, how does it work with the soul? The soul is caught up. The body and everything that's on the body, the blood, the body, the flesh, it all stays behind. They took Paul, I, remember they, I can't remember if it was Paul or Peter, but they took one of them out and threw him outside the city thinking he was dead, which I believe he was. He was stoned to death. And then God picks him back up, resurrects him, says, hey, it's appointed unto man to die once, but who does the appointing? God does. It's not your time yet. I need you to get back up and get back to work. And that's what happened to Paul. But notice what it said there, caught up. Kind of like the catching away, we would call the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. It's caught up. Okay, what's this going on here? He's, it's, every time it's a catching away, why? Hopefully, you're kind of. It's it kind of sinking in now. Why rapture is just evil and wicked? And you don't want to use the word rapture. There's something that God doesn't want us to go into, and we don't want to go into. We trust the Lord. We love the Lord. He says, "Hey, it's time to come up. Take me, Lord." I'm not going to fight you. It's not going to be violence involved of a pleasing nature. But here we are again. You die, the soul, God's like, uh, we don't need Abraham's bosom anymore, and you're not going to hell. Come up. Caught up. He was caught up. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. The soul and the body are the same, except you have a soul that you can't see, and the body is flesh. But they're connected and they're one. Okay, my soul's in my body. If I'm closing my hand, my soul is also closing his hand. Okay, I can't explain how it works. That's why Paul's saying, whether in the body, I cannot tell. He's up there, just the soul. He's like, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Okay. It's, it's, it's an experience. Okay. I wish I could experience that. Okay. 
Now, why would he say you glory in someone dying? Why would you glory in someone dying? Because he says that such a one will I glory. Even though he's talking about himself in the third person, as if it's a separate person, he's talking about himself. Why would he glory in someone dying and going to heaven? Well, why wouldn't you? All right. Philippians 1.21 For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. He's not talking about sin. This is what he's choosing. This is the hard part. Verse 23 For I am a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance and joy of faith, that your, re that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. When someone gets saved, why don't they go straight to heaven? They're here for the body of Christ, to encourage one another, to teach one another, to lift one another up when they fall preach the plan of salvation to the lost world so we can have more brothers and sisters in Christ okay there's a reason we're still here but Paul is saying it's far better to be with Jesus so when you have a brother or sister in Christ that dies the Bible says you don't have to turn here but 2 Corinthians 5 8 we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord when a brother or sister in Christ dies, that's truly saved and born again, they're absent from the body, present with the Lord. Praise the Lord. We glory in that. Why? Because we look forward to the day when it's our turn to be in heaven and be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not today, but it's coming. Okay. This is a caught up of a Christian that dies before the time of Jacob's trouble. It's an image. Okay. It gives us an explanation of what's going on. The soul gets caught up, not the body. Was there eyewitnesses to this event? Well, Paul is the eyewitness, and he's testifying. You don't, uh, it says before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. But Paul is, is an eyewitness, speaking of the Holy Spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit, and you have Paul, but he's testifying. This is what I witnessed. And because I believe the way he said, the way he said it was because it's just him as a witness. It's just him. That's why he said he talks about himself in the third person. Whether out of the body I cannot tell, whether in the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Okay? And he's an eyewitness. Okay? Plus, he's an apostle. I also want to throw that in there. The apostles had the Holy Spirit in them, and they preached things that God told them. Just like in the Old Testament prophet, prophets, they would speak as the uh, Spirit of God gave them utterance. God would speak through them. We don't have that today. We have the Holy Spirit that will speak to us as far as it will line up with this, the Word of God. There's people that say, Thus saith the Lord, and it's not in Scripture. That's not the Holy Spirit. Some people will go against this. It's not the Holy Spirit. Okay? If the Holy Spirit tells you something, it's going to line up with the Word of God today. But Paul was an apostle, a special office to the Gentiles. Peter was an apostle, special office to the Jewish people. Okay, the apostles had a special office. Uh, the, it was being the spoken because someone got on to me about the spoken word versus the written word. Well, back then it was the spoken word. Today we have the written word. The Holy Spirit's going to open this to you. He's not going to show you something completely foreign to Scripture and say this is still as good as Scripture. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, were there clothes or blood left behind? Yeah, like I said, they took his body and just threw him outside the city when he was stoned thinking he was dead. Okay, When a Christian dies before the time of Jacob's trouble, the body's left behind, that means the blood, the clothes, everything's left behind physically. The spirit leaves the body and the soul goes up. That's the fourth catching away that we read in the Bible. Okay. That happens. What's the fifth catching away that we read in the Bible? Uh, I went ahead and put this one first only because it's what we're reading as far as it's happened already. Not when it's actually presented to us, but when it happens. So we're going to talk about the fifth catching away that actually happens. Okay. The reason we talked about Paul's thing about the body, because even we're going to get into John now, 
his cat getting caught up and it happened there was people still Christians that were dying that were going up the soul was going up before John had his vision and we say what do you mean by vision we'll get into that okay some people keep saying he was caught up body soul and spirit that's not what the Bible says they're reading into something that's not there okay but Revelation 1 9 turn to Revelation 1 9 what's going on here he's in the spirit John's a great example of a disciple of whom Jesus loved, a great example of a man in great fellowship with the Lord, where the Spirit's going to catch you up for us today. I get to doing studies like I was doing this study. I was like, oh, Lord, this is amazing. This is amazing. I was getting caught up in the Spirit, and the Spirit was showing me things. I'm pointing over towards my computer because I used uh, uh, Webster's 1820 Dictionary and Word Search on there, and it's like going through, oh, this is amazing, Lord. You can go for a walk with the Lord and start talking about the wor Word, or you do a Bible study and you start going for a walk and you look out in the world and you start seeing stuff out there that the Bible was talking about. And the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit and the Spirit starts showing you things. Okay. So let's read the incident. Uh, Revelation 1.9 I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. He was in the capital S Spirit. Now, this is he hasn't been caught up yet, but there's a lot of play to this. Are we in the Spirit today, the Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women today? Remember, Jesus had to get caught up so the Holy Spirit could come down on the apostles could go and start going down on believers. Okay. Are we in the capital S Spirit today? The body of Christ? Oh yeah. And are we going to hear a trumpet? Absolutely. We'll get to that catching away. But the point I want to make with this one is you go turn to Revelation 4.1. He's in the cap. There's a capital S spirit there. He's in the spirit. He's in fellowship with the Lord. Okay. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. After this I looked and beheld, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was it were of a trumpet talking with me. There again you see the trump, the trump of God. It's the noise the trumpet makes is how God's voice sounds to us when he's speaking to us from heaven. Uh -huh. a tr talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And they always say, well, see, John was caught up, body, soul, and spirit. He was caught up. Well, we can just keep reading and find out what he was really caught up in. Verse 2, And immediately I was in the lowercase s spirit, and beheld a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. I believe his body was still here on this earth. He was caught up in the spirit. It says lowercase s spirit. Because I got confused at first because I was like, he got caught up in the capital S spirit. And I was like, wait a minute, no, the first time it mentions it, it's capital S spirit. This time, it's a lowercase s spirit. His spirit goes up. Okay. John 4, 24. We read, God is a capital S spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, that's a lowercase s spirit, and in truth. When, Jesus, when John says, I was in the capital S spirit, he's worshiping in spirit and truth. Romans 8, 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And you read Romans 8, it talks about being spiritually minded, capital S spiritually minded, and walking after the capital S spirit. Versus being carnally minded, walking after the flesh. Mm -hmm. But we see that. Ephesians 5.8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And who, why did I do that verse? Because who is the light? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the light of the world. Okay? He was in the capital S spirit, and God is showing him all these things. He's talking to him. He's in fellowship with the Lord. He's got a special office. He's an apostle. And God's showing him stuff to write down for the body of Christ. But the biggest thing that I believe when it comes to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. John was in the Spirit. He was immediately in the Spirit. There was a connection where he could start seeing what his soul was seeing. Remember, our soul is here in our body, and our soul is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. He says he was in the Spirit. Immediately he was in the Spirit. Not the flesh. He wasn't caught up, body, soul, and spirit. He's in the Spirit. That Spirit, God made a way for it to link so his body could see what his soul was seeing in heaven. He was caught up in spirit. Okay. But once again, for this fifth catch in a way, was there any eyewitnesses to this event? Well, John, once again, he's an apostle. God's showing him something to share with the world. Okay? God's showing it to him. And when God shows it to him, what happens? You got God the Father as a witness, the Son of God as a witness, and the Spirit, capital S, Spirit of God as a witness. Before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. There are witnesses, but it's God. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the apostles were in a specific office where it was the spoken word. Now we have all the spoken word. Now today, it's not about the spoken word, it's the written word. We're to speak the written word. If someone starts speaking and it doesn't line up with this, they're either in error or they're false. It's got to line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get to the sixth catching away. Mm -hmm. I believe John was caught up in the spirit. And there's, uh, get, getting back to that, not to get into a big debate with people, but oh, I don't think he came down. I think he was caught up permanently. Well, how do we have the book of Revelation then? No, he was caught up in spirit. And when that was all done, he was in fellowship with the Lord hardcore that day, and God showed him some amazing things, and he wrote it down. Okay. He died, I believe he died, on the island of Patmos, or it doesn't tell us what happened to him, but he died an old man. Okay. He died and then had the same caught up that Paul witnessed. That we witnessed the um, fourth catching up. The caught up. Oh, no, no, he was caught up body, soul, and spirit. It only says that he was immediately he was in the spirit, not body. His body didn't go up. So a lot of people have a hard time dealing with that, but that's the way it is. Unless someone can really prove that being in the spirit means that the body and uh, the flesh goes too. Okay. Remember, the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another. They're always warring one with another. Mm -hmm. So now we get to the sixth catching away. That's for us, brothers and sisters in Christ. The whole point of this study, and then it kind of got longer than I wanted it to be. But the sixth, because there were seven catch, ca catchings up, caught up, and I was like, oh, i got to write all seven down. Seven is the completion. If the last caught up, God's done with it. We're done. No more catching up. Mm -hmm. But the six catching up, let's get back to those verses again. 1 Thessalonians 4.15, what's this caught up for? Okay, we read about John, I forgot to mention this. I mean, what's God, God's catching him up to show him something. Something that he's not going to be going through. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. The, he, he shows him the millennial kingdom. He shows him what happens a little bit after the millennial kingdom. You know, the war, the, the last war of all wars, where Satan tries to gather the nations and... Jesus wipes them all out, and we go on into eternity. He talks about the new heaven and new earth. God shows them about things. That was the whole point of that catching up. Okay. So he's not ignorant. You're not going to be going into that time period. Now, the catching up for us, 1 Thessalonians 4.15, is before the time of Jacob's trouble. The body of Christ has to leave. He who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. We're hindering the Antichrist from physically showing up. The Antichrist spirit's here today, but in the flesh, he can't show up and start doing his thing. That first seal that gets opened up by Jesus Christ, which unleashes the Antichrist, can't happen while the body of Christ is here. So we're going to be caught up before falling into that time period. The body of Christ is a whole. There's some that are dead in Christ, which we're going to read about here, and there's some that are awake that are alive when that time happens. So 1 Thessalonians 4.15 For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of 
God. Same thing John heard. Now, like I said, I'm not taking back that John's not a type of Christian, like representing a type of Christian that's getting caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But he was caught up in spirit. We, however, we're going to keep reading here. Trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we see there we're going to be caught up. Now that's, the key words there to, for this study is dead in Christ shall rise first. We always take that one, dead in Christ. We take that and we try to link it up with 1 Corinthians 15 and say it's 100% it's the exact same event. And I agree it's the same event, but there's two parts to that event. And we're ignoring that. So we're going to come back to this, this section of scripture. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15.50. Let's look at the first part. That's the second part to the event. Same event, but that's the second part. What's the first part? 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's the key word there, changed. 52, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's the moment in the twinkling of an eye. What does it mean to be changed? Verse 53, for this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Always abounding because we're keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ. He could come back any moment. But in that passage there, what does it talk about us being caught up? Not there. That moment in the twinkling of an eye, it's talking about our flesh. Now, hear, hear me out. The reason we link the two together and know that it's the same event, but it's two parts to the same event. How do we know that? Because it said the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The dead in Christ, when we read up there in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Here it talks about the dead shall rise incorruptible. So we know it's the same event, but there's two parts to the event, and people are kind of making them, kind of meshing it together like it, there's no two parts. It's all one part. In the moment, the twinkle of an eye, not only do we get our, our uh, new bodies, but we're caught up instantly. So nobody sees anything. We just, one minute we're there, next minute we're not there. That's not what I believe this is teaching. Okay. The sun keeps moving, <laughs> so I'm losing my uh, uh, light. Um, but brothers and sisters of Christ, that's not what this is teaching. It's saying that we will get our new bodies in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ get raised incorruptible. There's no blood left behind. There's no body left behind. There's no clothes left behind. They're raised incorruptible. You see all these men with white robes, saints, uh, uh, Christians, people that are part of the body of Christ that have died since the death, burial, and resurrection to when this event happens, we're getting called up. People that have died are getting caught up. But they raise first. That's the first part of the event. The second part of the event is we're caught up. But what happens in a moment in the twinkling of an eye? When we put on incorruption. When this corruption shall put on corruption. One moment, this is how I look at it, brother, says Christ. I'm standing here, and let's say there's some witnesses. One minute you see me like this, an old man, old clothes, stained clothes, and I'm standing here, and the next minute you see a young man in a white robe. Like that, blink of an eye. Well, where'd Philip go and where'd this guy, this young man in a white robe come from? This corruption must put on incorruption. 
this uh, mortal must put on immortality. We're given our incorruptible bodies. And then when you read in 1 Thessalonians 4.15, it talks about how we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. I believe we're going to be caught up the same way Jesus was. I mean, when Jesus was caught up, there was men in white robes that appeared right in front of him. And it, they might have been there from the moment he got caught up. But think about this, brother and sister Christ. The whole point of this is they're trying to put out the UFOs. They're trying to push this alien abduction. They're trying to push everything. But remember, every main event, major event that leads from one dispensation to another, it's huge. It's out in the open for everybody to see. Okay? 2 Samuel 12, 12. I just threw this out there because I know it's talking about King David, but it says, For thou didst in secret, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun, all the earth. That's because of King David's sin. But I believe, by just looking at all the different dispensations in the Bible, when it went from one dispensation to the next, it was a big event. Sometimes the whole world saw it, the flood. Sometimes uh, there was only two people to see it, Adam and Eve. But there was a big group of people that saw it. The death of, of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. There were so many witnesses. He was there for 40 days. Okay? There was people that saw something that got left behind. The flood. You had Noah, his wife, his three sons, and his three sons' wives. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. There was witnesses left behind that saw what happened and knew what happened. Okay, the whole point of this is, I don't think it's going to be something done in secret. It's not going to be just a, okay, we're gone. Oh, there might be clothes left behind. No, there's not going to be any clothes left behind. Oh, there's going to be blood left behind. No, because it says we're going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. One minute you see this man that you see before you, the next minute in the exact same spot, you see a younger man in a perfect body, an incorruptible body in a white robe. I believe it's going to be a white robe, but I could be wrong on that. Okay. We're going to be standing here. Imagine that, brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a woman with two children that are under the age of accountability. The trump sounds, the trump of God. Not the trumpet, but the trump of God. His voice. He calls you by name. Philip Newton. The moment in the twinkle of the eye, we're changed. Philip Newton. Boom. Instantly, we're changed. I'm wearing a white robe. I'm not tired. My back doesn't hurt anymore. My knees don't hurt anymore. I'm not always tired like I have been lately. I mean, I'm different. I heard my name called and I changed in the moment twinkle of the eye. And you look around and he goes, come up hither. And we go up and people see it. But you have that mother with the two children that are under the age of accountability. Remember, where there is no law, there is no transgression. What I believe is going to happen is now that I keep looking at everything, he's gonna, she's going to be sitting there, her two kids, and you're going to hear this, she's going to hear loud thunder to say she's lost. She hears this loud, deafening thunder that hurts. And when she looks around, her two kids are gone. However, there's two people, there's two men in their place in white robes. Young men. Where'd you guys come from? Where'd my children go? A woman that's pregnant. Okay, one minute she's pregnant, next minute she's not pregnant. And there's a man standing next to her in a white robe. It's not going to be, I don't believe it's going to be a hidden event. I don't. I believe that it's going to be noticeable because all the children, all the pregnant women, those of us who are saved, there's very few of us today, but don't forget the dead in Christ. Scattered throughout the world, mainly not in America, but mainly there's, dead, there's some dead in Christ that will be raised in America, but a lot of them are over in Europe, around that area, uh, around Jerusalem. So, uh, that's where a lot of them, you know, the first fruits, and then the second where it's, we go out to the world and we start with the world. But the whole point is this, I believe it's going to be a huge event. The world's going to see it. There's no hiding it as far as something happened. Well, did something happen or did something not happen? Who can say? No, they won't be able to hide it. Something happened as far as something happened. What they'll try to do is deceive people. Okay? You've got all these people in white robes being caught up. I believe like Jesus did, clouds they get caught up. And you look at all these movies now of people being slowly going up by aliens, being abducted by aliens and being sucked up and everything. What is that? It's to try to hide what's going to happen. 
we're going to be caught up and it's not going to be in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. It's our flesh going from corruption to incorruption. It's going to be in the moment a, a blink, blink of an eye. But us actually going up, I believe we're going to go up the same way Jesus did. People are going to be looking in the sky. People are going to have seen something. There's not going to be a question of what did something happen or where did these people go as far as they went up. There's not going to be no question about it. What it's going to be is the deception is where did they finally end up. Where did they go? They went up. But where did they finally end up? You're going to have him trying to, to, put, to explain it away with alien abductions and everything. Okay? But I had to point that out that there are two parts to one event. Be careful not to try to mash stuff together or be a PWC like me sometimes and just parroting what someone else says. It's two events. Okay? That's the six catching away that we read in the Bible. And that was the whole point of the study. It could have been short, but God showed me all these times and said, hey, let's go through all these times. There's a caught up. Show me the time about the soul, just the soul getting caught up when a Christian dies in this time period, the church age. Death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay. What's the seventh catching away? And the time of Jacob's trouble before the battle of Armageddon. I say Armageddon, but before the battle between the two to three hundred million man army. Now, I'm not very... I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to different dispensation that's not ours. But it says in Revelation 12, 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her feet a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travaileth in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Jesus Christ was caught up, wasn't he? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath placed prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score. Okay, remember, this is all talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, though. Verse 7, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? But there's a caught up that it talks about. Now, it's, it, could be a, it could be reference to Jesus Christ, but a type that there's going to be Jews in that time of Jacob's trouble that's going to be caught up. Uh, we read in Revelation 6.11, it says, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay. Revelation 19.19, 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. But the reason I'm not, like, I'm not that familiar when it comes to the catching away in the time of Jacob's trouble but I do know that it talks about one. Okay? There is a catching away. And they always say it's two parts to the same catching away. Well, I'm, I, I believe it's a different catching away. Because it's not the body of Christ. The body of Christ is gone. Okay? It's catching away of people in the time, of saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So, that sun does like move around. But that's the seventh catching away, and it's the last one. Why? Jesus comes down. We come down with him. The people that were caught up, that suffered. If you suffer, ye shall also reign with him. So not everybody that went to heaven is coming down. Okay, Just those who suffered for Jesus Christ that's going to rule and reign with them during the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. But there's no more caught up in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Okay, Caught up. Third heaven. However, at the end of the thousand year reign, what happens? Death and hell are brought up to Jesus Christ, but they're not caught up to heaven. Okay? There's no more catching up. You got Jesus ruling and reign for a thousand years. At the end of the thousand years, G Satan is let loose for a little while, and he wars against, the, against Jesus, and Jesus wipes him out. 
permanently. Jesus, now Satan's going, because he's in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He gets let loose for a little while. Now he goes to hell to burn for all eternity. Everyone that's not for Jesus or not with Jesus or not covered by Jesus' blood goes to hell, the lake of fire. I'm sorry, death and hell are tossed in the lake of fire. They go in the lake of fire for all eternity. We go out into eternity, you have the new heaven and the new earth. There's no more catching away. There's no more death. There's the tree of life there. Okay, we're sustained by Jesus Christ, but the people that go into that time period that goes into, that goes into eternity, if I can say it right, they got the tree of life, where they have to eat from the tree of life, but there's no more death. There's no more caught up. There's no more going up, and there's no more going down. I'm looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to that. So I just wanted to do this quick study, Brother Sister Christ. Remember, I think it's going to be a big event. Okay, you look at all the catching away. Uh, you got to be careful. There's just some things people will try to teach that just don't make sense. It doesn't line up with Scripture. Blood's going to be left behind. No, nope, not in Scripture. Clothes going to be left behind. No, nope, not in Scripture. In a moment, in a twinkle of the eye, we're going to be changed. I'm going to go from looking like this to looking like, praise the Lord, a young, younger man, a younger version, hopefully, of me, but a younger man that has a perfect body, an incorruptible body, and I'm going to be wearing robes, white robes. Praise the Lord. I look forward to that day. Okay, When a brother or sister in Christ dies, we mourn because we, we're going to miss him, but we should really be glorifying him. Praise the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. He's with the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. When's it my turn, Lord? When's it my turn? My life is not my own. I can't take it. But Paul was sitting there, to be with the Lord is far better. But, in other words, my life is not my own. I need to be here for you guys. So, I hope this has been encouraging to the brothers and sisters of Christ to keep looking for that blessed hope with the life that you're living. But remember, I believe it's going to happen in our lifetime, and it could happen any day now. And when it does happen, I believe it's going to be a big event. It's not going to be something that the world just, it's, we don't really know what happened. One minute they're there, one minute they're not there. I, I just don't know what happened. That's not going to be it. It's going to be a big thing. And it's going to be a big thing that leads into the next dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.